Well, we're back. I don't know how many people that we've lost, but I apologize. I don't know what happened. We just lost signal. But um, we're going to wait just a moment, let some others get on here again, and we're going to talk about the love of God for our devotion this morning. Good to see some people signing back on. I don't know what happened. We, uh, we just lost signal. It's just peaceful again. I'm, I'm sorry. I just could stand. Again, it's just so peaceful. Good morning, Gloria. Good to see you. I'm going to wait for some other people to sign on. I see there's a few getting on here now. Hey, I don't know what happened. We just lost signal, but thank you for coming back. Good morning, Kimber. Turn to Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans, the fifth chapter. Kevin in Mississippi, good to see you. Good to see you, Sean. Hey, Ashley. Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans, the fifth chapter. I want to talk to you about the love of God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You know what? Before I read, I want to read a quote by C.S. Lewis. I want to read this to you while we're waiting. It says, nearer, to be nearer. If you want to get warm, you must stand near the fire. If you want to be wet, you must get into the water. If you want joy, power, peace, and eternal life, you must get close to or even into the thing that has them. That's true. I mean, to have joy, peace, eternal life, we must come by the cross. We must be close to Christ. He must dwell within us. But you know what? Love's not in that quote. To be loved by God, you just need to exist. God loves. God is love. God doesn't love you more because you do more. God doesn't love you less because you do less. God doesn't value me the way people value me. God doesn't say because people like me, I like him or love him, but because people don't love him, I'm not going to let. God doesn't say because you don't love yourself that he don't love you. God loves you with an everlasting love. And on this Monday morning, somebody needs to hear this. I need to hear this because there's sometimes we feel far away from God. We feel that we're not close to him, but I promise you, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's never going to say, I'm done with you. If you're a child of his, he's never going to throw you out and say, I'm done. If you're his child, God loves you. And I want to talk to you about that today. Romans, the fifth chapter, I want to read just 10 verses. Romans, the fifth chapter. Thank you guys for coming back. Sorry we lost you a moment ago. Pray that the Lord will bless this message and it'll help you today. Therefore, Romans five chapter Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith. I said it a moment ago, access. I like that word, access. We have access to the throne of grace. Why? Because of our faith in Jesus Christ. We have access to God. We have access to the one that has everything in control in the palm of his hand. We have access directly to him. And through this grace, when we stand and we rejoice in the hope of glory of God. And not only so by we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will not will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of the son, his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We're justified before God. We have access to God. And we have the hope that we're going to be with him forever and ever. Now, there's sometimes, as the psalmist said, I feel this way. and Maybe somebody does today. It's, he says, I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Man, that sounds, that sounds like he's in a low place. Sometimes we get in these low places. Sometimes we don't feel like God is near us. We don't feel like God is close to us. But the thing about being close to God has nothing to do with his love for you. You need to hear what I'm saying. God doesn't love you more because you can do more for him. God doesn't love you less because you're the, the vilest sinner. God loves. 
the peace of God, the closeness of God comes by obedience to God. By when we serve God and, and we, we please Him, then we have more of a, a closer walk with God. You can't be... You can't be saved and not be born. You can't be close to God and not be saved. You must be born again. However, he just says, even while we were yet sinners, Christ had died for us. He commended his love toward us. Don't ever doubt God's love for you. Never doubt it. And see, that's the thing. Doubt interferes with my walk with God sometimes. I start doubting, God, do you love me like you used to love me? Because there's times, can I just be honest? There's times when I don't feel like I love him as much as I did. Now, don't, don't, don't write me off and say, oh man, you're a heathen. I'm being honest. There's times when I say, I'm not as close to him as I used to be. I'm not fasting like I used to fast. I'm not seeking God all the time. And that has nothing to do with him loving me now. I can't make God love me more or less. But I was more into it. I was, what are you into today? I was more into, I was more into having that closer walk with him. I was more into more of his presence. But see, what happens is we get busy serving God and we don't experience his fullness because we're so busy, we neglect our relationship with him. God doesn't want you to get busy serving him and neglect just letting him love on you. God wants you to experience his love and his embrace and then go out and serve him. And sometimes we get so busy with life that we, we realize, you know, I'm just not, I'm not as in love with his presence as I once was. And listen, that's not a good place to be, but yet we find ourselves there. And I can tell you this, I miss him. I love him. I want more of him. I want to be closer to him than I've ever been because I've come to realize that uh, with everything happening in, in this world and all the things that happen on a Monday morning or maybe this week, the most important thing is that God loves me and that God didn't quit, stop loving me because I went astray. God didn't stop loving me because I did something I shouldn't have done. God loves me. He loves you today. He loves you with an everlasting love. The psalmist said, my soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before my God? My soul thirsted for him. Have you ever been so busy and successful and everything seems to be going right in your life, but there's something missing? Have you ever felt like that? Like, man, everything's going just the way it should. Maybe you've struggled for a long time, and all of a sudden you got that big deal that you were working on, or you got that promotion that you wanted, or you got that woman that you were after for a girlfriend and then finally married, or whatever it may be. I don't maybe whatever you whatever the success was in your life, but there's something missing. You go, man, I don't, I don't something's just missing. My family's healthy, I've got money in the bank, life is great, but something's missing. My friend. It's not God's love for you. It's your ability to, to come closer to him because what we've done is we put so much confidence and so much faith in this world that we have turned away from his presence. But see, God's presence is still there. It, it's, it's, it's so hard to explain. I'm just doing my best. Lord, help me. But I can tell you this. A closer walk with God, a closer walk with him where you experience more of his fullness, more of his presence, comes by obedience to him and comes with relationship to him. But it has nothing to do with how much he loves you. God will never stop loving you. To me, that's so securing, that's so liberating. Because when I'm sitting in my office on a Monday morning or I'm, I'm out in the woods where I work, and I'm thinking about all the things that went wrong or could go wrong, or, or maybe I'm seeing other people, they seem to be more blessed. I'm not talking about financially, which that happens too, but I'm saying more spiritually blessed. They just seem to be so in tune with God that there's times, y'all, when I start thinking, does he still love me like he did? Have I messed up somewhere? Did I go off on astray somewhere? And these are the times that I'm trying to remind you of that God is reminding me of. No, I, he, he never stopped loving me. He never lost his love for me and his passion for me, his desire for me. He never lost that. See, he had that for me when he was on the cross. I just read it to you. God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We know that we have a real enemy in this world. We know that this week there is, there is a being out there that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. 
Satan, that's what he does. But we also know that Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly. What is the abundant life? Really, what is the abundant life? I'm going to tell you what it is for me. The abundant life for me is a deep, abiding love and presence of God no matter what's going on in my life. I don't care how bad it is, what's happening. God's love fixes everything. That's what happened when I was born again. The love of God, undeserving, unbelievable love of God changed my life. It, it is the foundation of my whole spiritual walk is the love of Christ Jesus who died for me on the cross. And he gave me his love, not because I earned it, not because I said a prayer or, or jumped around and, and, and threw hoops or whatever, some religious thing. That, he did it because he loves me. That's it. He loves me. The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this that a man lay his life down for his friends. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. He loves us today. He loves us so much that there, the world can't take his love away from us. As vile as this world gets, as wicked as things are around you, God's not gonna say, well, because you're just invested in that, because you're part of that, I don't love you. No, that's the same thing that happened to, in Sodom and Gomorrah when Lot, Lot was vexed by the evil and the wickedness. Or, do you feel vexed? I feel vexed sometimes by the evil and wickedness in this world. And check this out. Sometimes I think maybe I vex some people myself because I'm not perfect. I'm not walking around holy and blessing people like the Pope would do. Not that he is holy. He's no more holier than anybody else. Let me tell you something. Our righteousness is filthy rags before God. God doesn't look at a certain person and say, well, you're more holy than others. Therefore, I'm just going to love you more. No, God loves me as much as he loves his everlasting, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. God loves me. He loves you. Who is he that condemneth? Who is he that puts you down? Who is he that comes against you and makes you doubt God's love for you? Sometimes it's not who's out there coming against you. Sometimes it's your own mind. Sometimes it's you saying, you know, I don't think God loves me like he used to. I don't sense his presence like I, I screwed up. I shouldn't have done this. And I wonder if God loves me. God's presence may not be as manifest as strong to where you can experience it. God's uh, always working in your life, whether you see him or not. But regardless of those things I just mentioned, his love is forever there. His love is true and his love is demonstrated on the cross for you and I. He proved his love to you and me. See, he proved it. He's still proving it today. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather this is risen, he is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? <coughs> shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril of sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, uh-uh. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am loved today. I am David, the beloved in God's eyes. You are, whatever your name is, the beloved in God's eyes. God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves me so much. Then after he saved us, after he saved us, he put his spirit in us because he says, I don't dwell in temples made by man's hands. I want to be close to my people. I want to be close to my children. I'm going to reside in them. God loves us so much that he empowered us to face tribulations and trials and persecutions and all these things because we're going to see Many things happen before us and many things are going to come against us, but he loves us so much. He gives us faith to overcome, not my faith, his faith that he gives me. He's the author and finisher of my faith. God loves me so much. He loves you so much that he's coming back 
for his children. The trumpet's going to sound. He's going to step out and say, son, go get my people. Go get my children. And Christ is going to carry us up to heaven forever to be with him. And you say, do you believe that? You really believe that? You better believe I believe that. He's made me a mansion. He loves me so much that he's built me a mansion to live in in all eternity. The greatest surprise in my life about God, listen to this, the greatest surprise, I grew up in church. I went to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesdays, until I got older. The greatest shock, the greatest shock, the realization of God was how much he loves me. That was the greatest shock of my life. I knew God loved. I knew that God loved. But see, I thought God loved like we love. I thought God loved me because I loved him back. Or I thought God loved me because I did good things for God. But when I was out there raising hell and doing things I shouldn't do, I said, God probably don't love me now. He's probably kind of mad with me. God's mad at me right now. God loves with an agape love. It's a love that we don't have a, that human language can't comprehend. We can't explain it. And let me just say this. The love of God can't be explained to a lost soul where they can sense it and feel it. They have to experience it by coming through the cross, coming to Christ. When you're born again, the love of God is so overwhelming. The love of God is perfect. And the love of God forever settles us. The greatest shock of my life was realizing that he has loved me all my life. He loved me when I was doing the things I shouldn't have done. He loved me when I was directly in going against what he would want me to do. He loved me and he still loves me today. And his love for me is not based on my value because of what you value me or I value myself. His love is based on who he is, perfect and holy, high and lifted up. And he will never stop loving us. He will never throw us out and say, I'm done. I don't love you anymore. You got to understand this. And I'm trying to get off of here. But salvation is, is, is the most important thing, the greatest experience of your life. But think about this. It cost God everything. It cost him everything. It started way back with Adam and Eve. And it cost him everything. Why would he do so much? Why would, why would all these prophets before us and all the... And once we read about the Old Testament, all the things that happen, everything's kind of clicking together, coming to the very end to when God judges the world and fixes this place the way it's supposed to be. And everything, God, we see Christ is exalted and, and, and all these things. Why? Why? Why did it go like that? Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Don't doubt his love for you today. Maybe you, no telling what some people have done this weekend. Let me tell you something. I preached Sunday morning, but I can live like hell on Saturday night or Sunday night if I choose to do so. If, if, if I put myself in a bad position, I can screw up. We're all like that. There is nobody that's got it all together. Do you hear what I'm saying? But the difference is, when we surrender to God and yield to the Holy Spirit and start confessing sin, Lord, help me, I repent of this. I want to be closer to you. That abiding presence of God that was already there, you just have a greater sensitivity to his spirit. And you're walking with him and you're saying, God, I'm walking so close to you. Lord, don't let nothing mess this up. Don't let me mess it up. Stay right where you're at. God's like, I'm not leaving. I never have. But see, if we don't seek him, if we don't remove the world from us more than, as much as we can, we start getting desensitized to the Spirit. Nevertheless, his love is still true. I hope this is helping somebody. I hope it blessed somebody today. And I hope you understand that the love of God, in my, my humble opinion, it, 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 it's something in heaven that if our lost loved ones could come back, they wouldn't come back. They want us to be there. That love 
is greater than when you were a child and you felt so secure with your parents. Maybe, you know, when you were little and you used to run and get in the bed with your mom and daddy because you were scared and you felt so safe. Don't even compare. The love that God has is the most securing, protecting, wonderful. I can't put it into words. Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. I pray for those watching today. I pray that you bless them. Let them sense your presence in a mighty way. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Lord, help us to get closer to you as far as service to you. And Lord, experiencing more of your fullness. But God, I thank you that no matter what I've done or ever done, that you've always loved me, that you commended your love toward me, that while I was a sinner, Christ died for me. I give you all the praise and the glory for everything that's happened in my life. I pray, pray over my friends. I pray to have a wonderful day. I pray that you open doors that need to be opened. I pray, Lord, that you close the doors they don't need to go through. I pray that wherever they go, they walk in your peace and your love. For us in your name we pray that you let the meditations of our hearts, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys today. We'll see you tomorrow morning.